what we're going to be looking at today are some of the properties of acids and bases. If you were uh, at school right now, I would have you get together with your lab teams and start try to brainstorm some things that you know about acids and bases. So if you want, you could pause this video right now, see how much of this table you could fill in on your own. Uh, but since you are watching this video, you're probably looking at least to see if you have the right answers. So I'm going to fill in this table uh, as if I was here in class with you. So if you think about all of the acids that you know, try to find an ion that they have in common. Uh, we have hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, nitric acid, acetic acid, or some of the acids you've learned about in class. They all have H plus ions in common. So all acids have H pluses. When we just got out of our titration unit, you are adding acids and bases together, and the bases that we used had hydroxide ions in them. Most bases have hydroxide ions, but not all of them. So if you're looking up uh, chemical formulas of bases and you find one that doesn't have an OH minus, that's okay. Not every single one has to have an OH minus. If something's neutral, your H plus is going to equal your OH minus ion concentration. That was the whole point of a titration, was to try to achieve that neutral, that equivalence point, to get those two concentrations to equal one another. As far as the taste of acids go, uh, now I wouldn't uh, suggest that you go drink a bottle of hydrochloric acid. That's not a good idea, but we're gonna look at some examples, just a second, of household acids and bases. So if you had a household acid, it's going to taste sour and bases tend to taste bitter. As far as the pH scale goes, pHs of acids are typically in the 0 to 6.99999 range. It is possible to have a negative pH, just not in any of the problems that you're going to see in our class. Uh, once you have that 6.999, the next number you'd hit would be 7 on the nose. That's when you have a neutral substance. And then bases are anything above 7. So if it's just a hair above 7, anywhere up to 14. It is possible to have pHs above 14, just not with any of the substances we're going to see in our class. You've learned about indicators in past science classes before, and you've used a, you've, uh, used a few in our class too. Um, universal indicator is one that we've used a few times in our classes. And universal indicator, if you put it in an acid, it's kind of a pink, red, orangey kind of color. In a base, it's more bluish purple. And when it's in its neutral state, it's green. Phenolphthalein was the indicator used in our titration unit. And the reason why phenolphthalein was used, when you put it in an acid, it's colorless. In neutral, it's still colorless. But in bases, it's bright pink. And so when we titrated, we were aiming for that light pink just past the equivalence point was the end point where it changes color. And so we were aiming for faint pink because that means that we've added just a hair extra hydroxide ion in there and it was diluted down a lot of colorless neutral stuff with just that hair of hydroxide that was making it turn pink. And then litmus paper you've used uh, in past science classes probably, not really in our class, um, but litmus paper, you could buy red litmus paper or blue litmus paper. If you take red litmus paper and put it in an acid, it stays red. If you take blue litmus paper and you put it in an acid, it turns red. So it'll either stay red or turn red in the presence of an acid. For bases, if you take blue litmus paper and put it in a base, it will stay blue. If you take red litmus paper, put it in a base, it will turn blue. So it'll either stay red, turn red for acids, stay blue or turn blue for bases. So what happens when you put it in a neutral substance? 
it basically just makes your litmus paper look wet. So if you take red litmus paper, it'll turn into wet red litmus paper. And then you take blue litmus paper, you put it in a neutral substance, and now it's just wet blue litmus paper. There's no color change either direction because there's equal amounts of hydrogen and hydroxide ions. Couple little important pieces of info for you to know uh, that when acids react with metals, so I'll give an example. Uh, maybe if we do hydrochloric acid plus magnesium, you would get as your products some magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. That hydrogen gas is kind of a signature of metal plus acid. You're going to get hydrogen gas all of the time. And so if you had a mystery substance, you wanted to see if it was an acid or a base, one way you could easily test for it, put a metal into that acid, into that mystery substance. And if it bubbles, if it makes that hydrogen gas, you know it's an acid. The chemical formulas of acids are made up of nonmetals only. So I'll give an example of some acids. You guys know hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, nitric acid, carbonic acid. If you look at all those chemical formulas, it's nonmetals only. Some Household examples of acids, anything citrus, so lemons or oranges, limes, they have that sour taste to them. Uh, vinegar, the main ingredient inside vinegar is acetic acid, HC2, H3O2. Shampoo is another one. It's a little bit acidic to help keep uh, your hair clean. And that's why uh, if you get shampoo in your eye, it hurts because you're getting a little, little bit of acid in your eyes then. Uh, and then if you're a soda drinker, if you like to drink Coke, for example, one of the main ingredients, if you read the label, is phosphoric acid. Uh, carbonic acid is another big one. That carbonic acid, H2CO3, can break down into water and carbon dioxide. That's where you get your bubbles from. Some characteristics about bases, they tend to have a slippery texture to them. And unlike those acids, they're made up of a combination of metals with nonmetals. So we set up above that uh, bases often have that OH minus ion in them. So a lot of times when you're titrating, for example, we use sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, maybe barium hydroxide. That's just some examples. What about household? Base examples, uh, bleach could be one. Baking soda, you know from your cookie project, is a basic substance. Soap, that has that slippery texture to it. Uh, your blood is just a little bit on the basic side. And this one's kind of fun, dark chocolate. I'm betting some of you that are watching this video like dark chocolate and some of you don't. And the people who don't like dark chocolate, it's usually because they say it's too bitter, the sign of a base. Then for as far as neutral substances go, water. We've talked about writing water as HOH, equal amounts hydrogen and hydroxide, so neutral. But water isn't the only neutral substance out there. I'll throw some other examples. Um, table salt, NaCl, or sugar, if you have C12, H22, O11. Uh, those are both examples of neutral substances. For it to be classified as an acid or a base, it has to impact the H plus and OH minus ion concentrations. If it doesn't do that, then your pH stays neutral, it stays at 7 and uh, wouldn't be classified as acidic or basic. Some characteristics that apply to both acids and bases, they both have the ability to hurt your eyes, 
or skin. A lot of people think that that's just an acid thing, um, but it could be bases too. If you imagine putting your hand in a bucket of bleach all day, that wouldn't be really good for your skin, right? So it's not an acid only thing to hurt skin or hurt eyes. Um, they both have the ability to conduct electricity. Not all acids conduct electricity. Not all bases conduct electricity. But both of them can conduct electricity, um, depending on the situation. It's not an acid-only thing or a base-only thing. And they can neutralize each other. If you have a base that needs to be neutralized, you can add an acid. If you have an acid that needs to be neutralized, you can add a base.